Bob? Uh, I think we've uh, covered that pretty good. It'll right. be interesting to see tomorrow uh, what the proposal is by tre- Treasury for TARP. And um, I think people should realize that TARP is um, just, as, uh, just a very, very similar to the program Hoover started in 32, uh, which got nowhere and was not very successful. And, you know, it's, it's, they're doing the same thing over again. Um, they've come on to a lot of heat for not answering as to who got the money. And, uh, they're also, uh, getting a lot of heat that people don't want it all to go to the bankers again because people assume, you know, that's where it went. And rightly so. And so you, you'll see it spread around in a different way. And, um, it would be good to be able to talk about it uh, today, but unfortunately we can't because it's, uh, the release won't come until tomorrow. Um, on the other hand, the stimulus package uh, it probably will be passed, uh, but there's all sorts of political infighting going on right now, and it could take another week or so, and we don't really know the final form. And... Um, the Republicans, you know, may try to stop it in the Senate. So I want to say this about a possibility of non-passage. If if it pa- if if it if it does not pass, the stock market will drop like a stone. Well, I I think you're probably right, and but uh, I think they're probably pass it because the, I think the congressmen are afraid not to pass it for fear that if there are complications, they'll be blamed for what's going on. Yeah, where the best thing they could do would be to do absolutely nothing to let the whole system collapse and start it all over again, because there's no way you're going to be able to preserve this this financial system that we have that is based on you know quicksand and it's just sucking everything down. What we need to do is do away with the Federal Reserve system and get back to a gold and back currency uh, which is controlled by Congress and by the states and not by a small group of wealthy bankers who are interested in enriching themselves but even more are dedicated to the destruction of the economy of the world and of course the establishment of this one world government because that's what it's really all about and that's why at this time in history why, of course, they're destroying the monetary system. And all you need to do is read the writings of the occultist. You can read them at, at the website for Share International Magazine, which is put out by the Luciferians, or the Emergence Newsletter, which we take, put out by the Luciferians. And they will tell you that this financial collapse is going to bring about this one world government and it'll allow their Christ, who is, of course, not the, the Jesus Christ, but it is the new world leader that they've been working for for so long. And I don't think most people understand the spiritual element of what's going on. Do you, Bob? No, I don't think they do at all. I, I think a very, very small percentage of people, perhaps 10%, you know, look at that uh, approach and, you know, I came to that solution, uh, conclusion in uh, about 1967 that it very simply was a fight between God and Lucifer or good and evil. And really that's what it boils down to. It certainly does. And you hang on there. We'll be right back. Well, this is Dr. Stan. And, of course, our guest is Bob. Chapman, he was certainly uh, talking about uh, how he came to the conclusion back in 1967 that you could not explain so much of what was going on from a political or financial point of view unless you understand that there is an age-old struggle between good and evil, between God and Satan, and Satan has his people here working at the highest levels of our financial a strata. And if you doubt that, and if you, of course, buy anything from us, can ask for a copy of the pamphlet entitled The Working of the Spiritual Hierarchy. It's put out by the Luciferians. And, and they will tell you that they have their people planted at every level of government, including financial institutions throughout the world. Once you understand their interest in finance, uh, you begin to understand why this is so important. Usury was accepted in Western civilization as a result uh, of the uh, pleadings of a man named Francis Bacon. 
back in the early 1600s. Francis Bacon was a Rosicrucian and really behind so much of what's going on in America today and his dream of America becoming the new Atlantis that would lead the world into a new world order. He even wrote a book about the new Atlantis, and that was America, to use our financial and military power to subjugate the entire world, and it's exactly what's going on today. Well, Bob, certainly they were playing games with gold. Gold was up nicely a week before last, and, and then last week it wasn't doing too well, and boy, it sure looks sick today. Well, I think uh, we have to expect that uh, every weekend uh, they're going to put their forces together and uh, they're going to decide uh, what they're going to do on Monday. And it usually starts in the matter of gold on the Tokyo uh, Stock Exchange, uh, which is the uh, TOCOM, uh, the Tokyo Commodities Market. And then, of course, we have the first and then second uh, fixings in London. And so uh, it's almost like clockwork. Uh, every Monday, gold goes down. Uh, sometimes it's 6 or $7, and today it was 18-something. And the same with silver. And so they, they continue to play this game. And at the same time uh, today, uh, the... Um, the currencies were all very strong against the dollar, which would usually mean that gold would be strong when, in fact, it wasn't. And, of course, the uh, working group and financial markets spent a great deal of time today, effort, and money keeping the stock market from going down. Uh, the market wasn't happy that uh, Mr. Geithner... Uh, had not come out uh, with his proposal for the second har- half of TARP. And also, they didn't see the stimulus package passed. They saw more dissension. And so, government steps in and holds the market up. And that's essentially what they did. I mean, you, you can tell by looking at the numbers in the action all day, the Dow was down 10, S&P was up 12, and NASDAQ was down 4. All of them Dow contributed points. And so the the, uh, the song, the refrain, goes on and on and on. And that is, let's manipulate the markets as much as we want. Well, you know, I think it's so interesting. People should look back to October 3rd. And then Henry Paulson was said, uh, the sky's going to fall, the market's going to collapse. You know, if you don't give me $700 billion, you've got to give me $700 billion. And then, of course, they added $150 billion of bribes for the congressman. They switched 55 votes. And on October 3rd of last year, Henry Paulson got his $700 billion. He couldn't give the money away. Instead of doing what he promised to do, and that was addressing uh, the home foreclosures and buying up, of course, the collateralized debt obligations, these these toxic bonds that they had circulated throughout the world. Instead of doing that and trying to stop the situation, he tried to give the money away. Well, the, the major banks didn't want his money because they weren't having a problem. But he has already told the American people it was a terrible problem. The economy is collapsing. Nobody's buying or selling. It was all a lie. You can go to the uh, to the on the internet to the Bank of Minneapolis, the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis. They went over the figures and they said he's not telling the truth. You can go to the select port and uh, we have a copy of it, and because uh, it's discussed in great detail uh, by Cliff Kincaid uh, up on his website or at least his site at, at newsreviews.com. And read it. Find that the Slint report went over the, the whole period there up, up until December and said there was no problem. But Henry Paulson had to force the banks to take money and try as he could. He's only been able to give away 350 million of the 700 million. Why hasn't he gone after? Are you trying to do something about the home foreclosures? Because they don't want to solve the problem. When you understand that, so many things make sense. We'll be right back in a moment. <laughs> 